But there were three that we liked. Um, free as a bird, real love. And so those were the two that we did. And there was another one that we started working on, but George went off it. <sighs> fucking hell. Fucking rubbish, this is. It was like, no, George, this is John. It's still fucking rubbish, you know. Oh, okay then. <laughs> so that one, that one's still lingering around somewhere. I'm going to nick in with Jeff and do it, finish it one of these days. During the mid-1990s, the three surviving Beatles collaborated on the anthology series. The results were collected as a book, a companion television documentary, and a three-volume set of double albums. Two Beatles songs, Free as a Bird and Real Love, which were created from old demos that John Lennon's widow, Yoko Ono, had given George Harrison, Paul McCartney, and Ringo Starr, were among the project's most talked-about elements. With the help of producers Jeff Lynne and George Martin, the remaining Beatles improved their late bandmates' compositions with vocals and instruments. Now and then a third song was also considered for anthology inclusion, which was originally recorded on a tape that Ono supposedly gave to McCartney and on which John Lennon had scribbled for Paul. On March 20, 1995, McCartney, Harrison and Starr began working on Now and Then, recording a backing track that was to be used on what would have been the finished product. However, after one more day of working on the track, all plans to finish now and then and have it included on Anthology 3 were scrapped because Harrison considered it to be fucking rubbish. Harrison, according to an unnamed source from the sessions, was the one who finally put a stop to song's development. George just didn't want to rework it because it's not a matter of putting some vocals or a bit of bass and drums to finish it. With this, you have to really build the song. The genius of the Beatles was predicated upon Lennon and McCartney. What was normal in the early days at least was that John would come in with a fragment and Paul would turn it into a hit or vice versa. Later on, Jeff Lynne said, the song had a chorus but is almost totally lacking in verses. We did the backing track, a rough go that we really didn't finish. It was sort of a bluesy sort of ballad, I suppose, in a minor. It was a very sweet song. I liked it a lot and I wished we could have finished it. More specifically, in 1995, it was impossible to get rid of the tape hiss from Lennon's cassette tape recording. Though they didn't get very far, the surviving Beatles tried to fix Now and Then, which Lennon had originally titled I Don't Want to Lose You. Also, Paul McCartney admitted that Harrison was the one who prevented Now and Then from being completed. According to McCartney's 2021 feature in New Yorker, Harrison called the original demo fucking rubbish. In the 2012 BBC documentary, Mr. Blue Sky, The Story of Jeff Lynne and ELO, he restated that Harrison went off it, and that's when things on Now and Then stopped moving forward. Paul explained, It didn't have a very good title. It needed a bit of reworking, but it had a beautiful verse and it had John singing it. But George didn't like it. The Beatles being a democracy, we didn't do it. However, McCartney has indicated many times that he would still like to work on the demo, over the years, McCartney had been sporadically trying to finish the song. However, Now and Then was never completed until Peter Jackson showed him how AI technology could be used to clean up the audio for his 2021 documentary, The Beatles, Get Back. In a 2023 interview, McCartney mentioned that he had been working on a demo that John had with the same artificial intelligence technology that The Beatles, Get Back director Peter Jackson had used. McCartney told the BBC's Radio 4. He was able to extricate John's voice from a ropey little bit of cassette. We had John's voice and a piano and he could separate them with AI. They tell the machine, that's the voice, this is a guitar, lose the guitar. Prior to the release of Now and Then in 2023, Olivia, the widow of Harrison, corrected some misconceptions. Back in 1995, after several days in the studio working on the track, George felt the technical issues with the demo were insurmountable and concluded that it was not possible to finish the track to a high enough standard. If he were here today, Donnie and I know he would have wholeheartedly joined Paul and Ringo in completing the recording of Now and Then. Sir Paul and Sir Ringo set about completing the song in 2023, adding new vocals, drums, bass, guitar and piano as well as electric and acoustic guitar parts recorded by Harrison in 1995 before his death. 
It was the closest we'll ever come to having him back in the room, so it was very emotional for all of us, said Star. It was like John was there, you know. It's far out. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ringo, folks. <laughs> well, what can I say? And goodbye you to know. all of us. <laughs> well, this is Ringo. Everyone seems to have said everything here, so I'll just sign off by saying cheerio and best of luck from the Beatles. <laughs>